Closing. Nice job, Scott and Patrice. There you see, number four for the Edmonton Oilers, Taylor Hall. When we come back, we'll hear a conversation with him and more Hockey Night in Canada. Oilers got a big win tonight, dropping the Calgary Flames by a score of 2-1. to one. one of the young stars of this team we know picked up an assist. It's Taylor Hall, and there he is, standing by with Cassie. Taylor, I guess first off, this was your eighth one goal game in a row, but this one you win. Now you've won three of the last eight. You got points, I think five and eight, so that's a good sign. But I think you have to talk about your goaltender tonight. I mean, he was solid right from the get-go. Yeah, he's um, he's a guy that's come into our team and um, maybe had a bit of a slow start, but he's uh, a very hard worker, very diligent in practice, and uh, has been a really good teammate. Um, so for, for a guy like that to do well and, and to k keep doing well has been really fun to watch. And right now he's our team. We, we can't score goals. Um, so he's bailing us out big time during games. And, and he's the reason we got two tonight. You know, you were hard on yourself as we were sitting here waiting to get this going. But you kind of forgot. You won a really key face-off tonight. <laughs> and I know it was Bob Bugner who coached you for in Windsor for in the OHL who moved you from wing or center to wing to give you more ice time in Windsor and hey it paid off tonight yeah no it's uh it was nice to win a face off some sometimes our, our centerman gets kicked out it's uh it's nice to go in and, and win a face off and uh contribute on a goal but definitely it was uh it was a bit of a strange night for a lot of guys in our team including myself but like you yeah. look like just a regular going and you played center a little bit under Dallas Aiken so it was yeah. a bit of an experiment but it's a big uh, it's a big face off yeah I've played some center for sure and it's uh it's more after the face-off, you know, there's there's so much responsibility as the as the centerman on the ice, so you really have to get in that mindset as soon as you're taking the face-off. But um, great, play, great play by Feyner, and uh, lucky we forced overtime. You and I had a pretty candid conversation this morning, and it was after you dealt with this huge scrum of media that comes in. And we talked about the Connor McDavid effect on you. And when he arrived, the media scrum, this is him, right? This is him in the media scrum. Oh, this is actually going to be Taylor, our producer, Mike Rasso, telling me. So this is you, similar to what you would have seen this morning, a huge scrum. You know, you dealt with that for how many years? And then Connor came. It was sort of his turn. And then after they spoke to him, they would kind of go and speak to everybody else. And I was surprised at how honest you were to me that, you know, kind of you weren't really the guy anymore. And how you dealt with that, because it takes a pretty unselfish guy to do that. Well, I, I just want to be on the best team that I... Uh, you know, possible. And Connor's a generational player. He only played 13 games, but I think everyone sees that. And for a guy like myself, um, you know, it, it's not a passing of the torch by any means. It's just we hadn't done well in the last five years, and we have a guy like Connor coming in, so it's exciting. I'm I'm ready to um, you know to to teach him whatever I can, and I'm probably going to learn just as much from him as uh, you know as as he's going to learn from me, but. You know, I was telling you this morning, it, uh, it's very humbling when you, you know, when you kind of take someone on, a, a pupil on, you learn a lot about yourself and um, how you want to carry yourself. So I think that's uh, improved me and uh, it's been a really good relationship along with Luke who lives with us as well. Now, I, I went to the new arena today and I toured it just like the general public did. I went down as kind of like a fan, I guess. But, you know, what's it like in that room? It's going to be a spectacular building. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. And, and just, you'll never forget the Gretzkys here and the Messiers and the Currys and whatever, everything that happened in this building. Yeah. But is it going to be nice to kind of take this generation and kind of forget the past a little bit and, and sort of build something of your own? It's exciting. Uh, it's similar to what I went through in Windsor. Our, our first year and a half there, we played in an older building and, and we transitioned into a newer one. And it was a, you know, just a, a new generation, a new feel. And, uh, you know, Rexall Place is great. Our facilities uh, as an oiler are, you know, we have everything we need. But, uh, you know, seeing seeing these pictures and, and uh, you know, seeing what it's going to be like in that arena, I think everyone's excited. So I haven't had a chance to tour it since last year. And I want to go on a tour and see what our room's going to be like. I think it's going to be interesting to see how training camp goes. You know, we have I have so many routines that go on here at Rexall Place that I'm going to have to learn how to kind of get a feel for the for the new arena. So I think that's going to be interesting. I've heard a rumor, I can't confirm, but there might be a fireplace in your, your new dressing room. I, I don't know, but... I've heard all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so it, it's you'll, you'll have to see when, when it gets there. But um, 
I think everyone's excited. We have a picture of the Windsor Spitfires Arena, the Windsor Arena in Windsor, obviously, where you played. And, and Warren Reichel was telling me a pretty funny story about you, and it really shows your competitiveness. Here's the rink, and you can see there's 100 rows at the end, and then on the side that we really can't see, there's a restaurant. And you were trying to get the Windsor Spitfires so that you guys could shoot on that end of the ice so that your fans could see you guys score and kind of boost it. Am I, t am I doing this story justice? That's what Warren told me. So it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, you say a lot of things when you're a <laughs> 16, 17 sure. year old kid. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I thought it'd be fun to, for the fans to see us score. We were such a great team and we had so much fun out there. And I think the fans saw that. So I would have loved to shoot at the end where, where everyone was, but um, second period would do. Well, Taylor, we wish we had more time. We have so many more things to talk about, but we got to send it back to George and the boys. But thank you very much. Thank you, Cass. All right, thank you. So there's a, uh, a veteran now. You know what, well. he's, he's matured beyond his years, I think, the last few years. I loved his comments talking about uh, McDavid, but he's also been in the league six years now. He hasn't played one playoff game, not one. I mean, wherever his uh, career ends, you'll always look at those first six games or six seasons ago. Didn't Very impressive game. interview. I, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell you took all, all the time. time. What I have right here, <laughs> not the best I have <laughs> the top <laughs> five plays of the night. We'll get into that and more when we return to the Hockey Central Saturday post-game show. Help!